Hello and welcome to your first video lesson. While watching this lesson, make sure you are following along with your course pack pages, either filling in as you go or if you want to replay it a second time to fill in the answers or pausing along the way, that's great as well. So we're going to start off with a slope review. The word slope is used to describe the measurement of the steepness of a straight line or a line segment. The larger the value of the slope, the steeper the line. Another term for slope is rate of change. As you can see in this diagram over here, the slope of a line is measured by the vertical rise over the horizontal run. And we can use the formula rise over run. The mathematical symbol used for slope is m. So for the first example, we're given two different hills and we want to calculate which one is steeper. So to do this, we're going to use our slope formula, rise over run. Rise represents the vertical portion, which in this case is 100, and the run is 800. Slope should always be written as a fraction in lowest terms. So the slope of that first hill is 1 8th. For hill B, the slope is 300 over 800. Reduced to lowest terms is 3 8 Therefore, which hill is steeper? Well, hill A has a slope of 1 8 hill B has a slope of 3 8 and 3 8 is greater than 1 8 therefore hill B is steeper. On the next page, we just look at different ways of writing the formula for slope. So slope, we use the letter M, we can use rise over run if we're given a graph that has nice points on it that we can use and read values off of the scale on the x and y axis. Or if we're given two coordinates, we can use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And another way of saying the same thing is the change in our y values divided by the change in our x values. So we have a few examples down here. For the first example, I know I need to calculate the slope and I'm given two coordinates, so I start with my slope formula. So m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. When you're starting learning slope, I really like to start by labeling my coordinates. So the first point I've labeled as x1, y1, and the second coordinate, x2, y2. They are interchangeable. If you used this as x2, y2, and this is x1, y1, you will get the same result. So substituting our values in one at a time, y2 is negative 4 minus y1, which is positive 4, all over x2, which is 2, minus x1. When we're subtracting a negative number, we can do one of two things. Either write it as minus a negative, throwing that negative in brackets, or if you're comfortable changing that automatically to a plus sign, you can do that because when we subtract a negative, it's the same as adding a positive. Negative 4 minus 4, simplify up the top, we get negative 8. 2 minus negative 4, like I said, it's like adding, so 2 plus 4, and we get 6. Reduce to lowest terms, negative 4 thirds is the slope for that first line. So for B, we're going to start by writing M to represent slope. Then we're going to grab our y2. Again, if you want to label those coordinates first, go right ahead and do that. And then we're going to subtract our y1 value over x2 minus, and again, we're subtracting a negative, so brackets, or changing it automatically to a plus sign here. Simplify the top and simplify the bottom. Now, negative 5 over 1 can be written as the integer at negative 5. So what I would like you guys to do right now is try to find the slope for C and D by pausing the video, completing those, and then coming back to me and checking to see if you've got the correct answer. So you can pause the video right now. All right, welcome back. So if you've completed C and D, you should have the slope negative 5 over 2 for C and positive 3 quarters for D. Moving on to the next page, we're just going to look at a couple of the properties or important pieces when it comes to slope that you should recall. So slopes can either be positive, which would be a line that's going up from left to right. A slope could be negative, meaning it's going downwards from left to right. 
It could be a horizontal line, which will always have a slope of zero because it has um, no rise or zero for its rise. And any potential number for the run, zero divided by any number will always result in zero. So that's your slope for horizontals. Vertical lines, on the other hand, they have lots of rise and no run. So when we divide anything by zero, we'll get that fancy error message in our calculator. So we refer to that as undefined. Two more properties you should recall is that the slopes of parallel lines, parallel lines being two lines that will never cross each other, their slopes are always the same or equal. Whereas perpendicular lines, meaning two lines that cross at a right angle or at a 90 degree angle, have opposite reciprocal slopes. So we'll do the first example just to refresh your memory on, in particular, opposite reciprocals. So example A, line segment J has a slope of 2 thirds. If line segment K is parallel to J, its slope is the same, 2 thirds. If line segment L is perpendicular to J, its slope would be the opposite reciprocal. So when we say opposite, we say change the sign. In this case, it's a positive slope, so opposite would mean it's a negative slope. And that word reciprocal just means to flip that fraction. So instead of 2 over 3, we now have 3 over 2. So a line segment that's perpendicular would have a slope of negative 3 halves. Pause the video for a second. Give B and C a little go. They're a little trickier and see what you come up with. All right, welcome back to the video. So here we've got example B. Line segment M has a slope of two. So if a line is parallel, it will have the same slope, also being two. Another line segment O is perpendicular. So we're gonna change the sign from a positive to a negative. And we don't see the fraction here, but whole numbers can always be written over one. So when we flip that, it becomes one half. So the perpendicular line has a slope that's negative one half. For the last one, line segment P has a slope of zero. So this guy right here is line segment P, a horizontal line. A parallel line would have the same slope, also zero, but horizontal and vertical lines are opposite reciprocals of one another, or they're perpendicular to one another. So we know that the opposite reciprocal slope would have to be undefined. And if you were to follow the same set of rules, zero over one, flip it, we would get negative one over zero, and any time we divide by zero, you're gonna get that error message, which tells us it is an undefined slope. And that is the end of our slope video.